What's up guys and welcome back for another solo mining episode, episode 22. We are going to be going out in the Mackinac as promised. Give you a little bit of an idea of what we're running. Let me go ahead and undock here so we can get out to grid. But we're going to be running modulated strip miner 2s with the simple ore crystals. So I'm using type of A2, um, simple asteroid mining crystals with this. Got some core defense field extender 2s, and then multi-spec hardener, and then a medium shield extender 2 are Our EHP is going to be looking at about 48,000, and then got mining laser upgrade 2s in the lows, and then we're just carrying some uh, hornets. I am primarily going after Plague right now, just to kind of even out what we did in the last episode. I'd say we need like one more load of Plague and then we can just kind of blanket mine everything. I'm going to kind of get back to where I was. I already did one trip out here. I'm trying to get this uh, Azure Plague. Which these two rocks are almost done. This system's a little busy. There's a lot of uh, guys running abyssals here. And they're actually popping these abyssal traces here at the belt. Also there's just a lot of like wrecks and stuff. Kind of a messy system. We're going to grab these two Azure Plague over here in this corner and then start targeting regular Plague. I could technically bring an alt out here and boost this ship and compress on site, but I'm kind of just making it simple right now there is a Athenor in this system that allows me to compress so I don't have to I was going to bring like the uh, the porpoise over here and stage it if there wasn't compression that way I could do a bunch of mining and then have like a nav out in the middle of nowhere and load up the porpoise and kind of warp out there and compress it before bringing it back to Jita but since there is an Athenor here, I'm able to just <clears throat> kind of compress it in station and then we'll just kind of throw it all in the Mackinac and take it back once we uh, get a good amount. It would be actually kind of interesting to actually mine out here in this system until I had a Mackinac full of compressed ore, but that would take a long time. That would take like 80 or more trip it would take a lot of trips to fill that up the asteroid is depleted grab this guy and we're gonna go after this uh 20. i have this um survey scanner list sorted by volume descending We're going to kind of make sure we're positioned in a way that we can kind of move around this belt and grab all these. Once we get this Azure, Azure Plague out, we can probably get like two more Plague Rocks and then we'll be full. It's just uh, cycle times are a lot slower than what I'm used to with uh, drones. Drones are uh, flat 60 seconds. These, uh, these mods are... 162 seconds, but they're effectively double than what the uh, mining drones were doing with the pla with the uh, porpoise. So we're doing about 2,400 or 2,417, 2,413 cubic meters every cycle per strip miner. So about 48 and some change. Going to stop the ship here. I 
I'd say doing about an hour of mining for this episode, we'll probably do two or three, two or three loads, which is good. If we take this episode and we do nothing but plag, then that will, um, that will balance out kind of our variety of materials pretty well. be keeping an eye on these rocks. This rock is only like 6,500 cubic meters, so it'll be like one full cycle and then like a quarter cycle. That's another benefit of using a survey scanner. You can kind of do the math in your head and if, you know, the rock only has a thousand cubic meters in it and each of your strip miners is 2,400, there's absolutely no point in doing a full cycle because you're not getting the yield for it. We do have a little bit of a waste as well, so once this cycle completes, yeah, see. All right. The asteroid is depleted. We're gonna split on this. I'm pretty sure these are the two. Yeah. One's 17 and one is 20, so that will be enough to fill us up once these rocks are, are down. The first, um, <clears throat> the first load I came out here and did before recording was, after compression, it was about 4 million. So, we'll be looking at roughly 8 million in value in system once this uh load is done i would assume that in an hour we can probably do we can probably get about 30. kind of depends on how much downtime we've got every built up gone to in this system has just got wrecks and cargo containers and all kinds of crazy stuff We've got some deep core mining ventures out there. We've got some mineral ventures out there. Kind of a busy system. No part strongholds, so that's good. This is a uh, 0.7. So we will have rats, but they'll be in the uh, frigate variety, which our Tech 2 Hornets will be overkill for that. Which is uh, which is good. That is one benefit of actually having like an actual like exhumer. We don't have to actually stop mining to kill the rats as you would with uh, drones. You have to at least minimal. You have to bring the one of the drones in to throw a combat out. I think we did a cycle already. Let me do a survey here. Hmm, not yet. We'll essentially be on these two rocks for this trip. And what I'll do is I could just uh, warp to the Athnor and use the uh, cargo deposit on the outside, but I'm going to dock and compress as we go. We've done 9,600 cubic meters so far. 18 and 16 is left on here. I'm having to be a little bit more vigilant in this system just because there's a lot of local activity. I think a lot of that has to do with abyssals. People are just running abyssals a lot, so... Showing a lot of activity. I've already started kind of pricing out a uh, an orca because I think here in the next few days or so I'm gonna try to try to get an orca popping. 
I need to see if I still have my crane fit, actually. Figure while we're waiting, I'll kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah, here it is. So, this is my crane fit. The way this is fitted, about 12,500 12, cubic meters it can hold. And this will fit inside the Orca maintenance bay. So, essentially, if we're really far out from Jita, where we're staging all of our ore, we'll be able to compress wherever we're mining, and then we can essentially travel and take 12,500 cubic meters in this over to uh, to Jita. You don't necessarily need the interdiction nullifier for high sec traveling, but this is just kind of standard issue for what I've got. If you're doing using this in like low sec or something, um, you might use some like workhorse stabilizer here, but the benefit for this ship is it uh it can't be cargo scan, which doesn't really matter because it's going to be cloaked anyway. So that's really important part is just fast align, fast ish align, and just cloaking everywhere we go. Essentially, these EM shield amps are just filling the holes. This is what we'll primarily primarily use to move a decent amount of compressed ore around high sec. I've kind of since we since last video while I'm, when I got the uh, porpoise, we're in the process of just kind of building out the uh, the ships for this character to, that we'll be using. So we're looking at buying an orca. We're looking at buying the crane and then based on whatever mining barge or expeditionary frigate or uh, exhumer we kind of mine in we'll kind of acquire those things as we go but we could technically kind of sit on the Mackinac for a while just to the Mackinac is expensive this Mackinac cost over 300 yeah about 340 send you know a lot more than the uh, the porpoise but it is what it is I'm still trying to decide what we wanted to build when we start doing industry I mainly need to know what kind of beforehand because I want to be able to I'm going to be able to research the BPOs, the blueprint originals, research them and get them kind of all ready to go. We might just pick something simple. Later today, I might actually get to Jita and kind of start poking around and seeing if anything tickles my fancy. We could potentially just make um, procurers. We have to dip into uh, low sec and grab some stuff out of uh, different areas of New Eden to kind of fill it out. But I think it'd be an interesting thing to to kind of produce this blueprint is going to be expensive though but yeah what I'll do is I'll <clears throat> probably get a short list probably get like quite a few BPOs throw them into research just like I've said in other videos with industry, we want to have a good variety of things that we can make so we're not kind of stuck in one corner of the market. Oh look, a retriever. He needs a skin on this thing. I like retrievers. They're 
a lot cheaper. <laughs> but Mackinac is just, uh, what are cheaper going for now? 59 million. So after fitting, we could probably be looking at close to a hundred. So a third of the cost of a Mackinac. Very, uh, very squishy though. Essentially paper tank for the most part. Let's go into a survey scan here. Progressing nicely, about nine about nine thousand cubic meters. We'll have a, <clears throat> a full ship here in a minute. The reason I decided to go um, mod was because in most of my videos I've done just like normal strip ones. And this character, I mean I did have to like get uh, simple or reprocessing for to run these crystals. But I figure just to kind of show some variance. It's kind of boring just to always show like strip one miners. And if you're already you know, be spending the money on a Mackinac, you might as well go with modulated strip miner twos with crystals. The other thing she's working on too with skills is just like reprocessing um, stuff. So we're actually going to train simple or processing five because we're going to be refining all of our own ore and we want the best possible yield there. So we're going to be using bean counter for reprocessing everything we can do to get the most out of our ore when it comes to getting that stuff yielded so she's doing kind of like some preemptive industry skill stuff and we'll start once we get kind of all that stuff rounded out I will be moving into production stuff so we'll probably be building some sort of ship so a lot of let's look at production so she's working on advanced mass production right now, um, but we'll be slowly getting into advanced industry, probably get industrial ship construction, things like that. And then we'll probably have to get some science skills to just help with uh, kind of quality of life as far as industry goes. We're going to want to have to, we're going to want the ability to kind of accept uh, delivery on completed manufacturing jobs from range and yeah, there's just going to be a lot of stuff that goes into it, but I think it would be kind of interesting to actually like kind of this is kind of like my train of thought right now is like we we start off at it as like a you know adventure an alpha venture we gotten up to the point where we get omega we maintain it and then now we're essentially mining uh covering omega and building mining ships at profit as well so i think that like overall in like the big picture you know being a solo miner who is also building mining ships or building the equipment that we're actually using would be fairly interesting. Obviously, like Tech 2 stuff is going to be a little bit more um, complex because it requires invention and things like that. But, I mean, at the very least, we can start building mining laser ones, uh, strip miner ones, retrievers, procurers, uh, coveters ventures that stuff like that is kind of the way I'm thinking we're going to be starting off with industry 24,000 let's do a scan here I'm about to complete another cycle we're going to have to move here in a little bit depending on waste Let this cycle complete and then see how we do. 
but I am kind of hopeful for the direction that this series is going <clears throat> and we'll probably still <clears throat> show the industry stuff in this series since the primary the primary way that we're achieving that industry is through solo mining let me do another survey scan here because I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to half our cycle oh yeah one of these rocks another trick you can do too is if I select this rock that has 213 cube meters in it it highlights it here and I can click this so I don't have to have any like guest work guesswork on which one to cut and I'm just going to grab another plague rock and grab another one I think this rock will be done at about half cycle so at half cycle we're going to cut it 20 almost 30,000 cubic meters that'd probably be a good place to start I'm thinking we might just <clears throat> go and acquire a uh, a venture BPO and get it start getting it researched while we're kind of stockpiling because we don't want to actually like stockpile a bunch of ore and then have to like stop and wait for like BPOs and stuff to get researched for time and mineral efficiency we want that those to be kind of done when we're getting to the point where we're ready to build stuff so I might actually like get on today and grab strip miner one BPO venture BPO mining laser upgrade BPO I would say we'd build like um, the mining burst charges but that stuff requires pretty sure if I remember correctly it requires ice product <clears throat> the asteroid is depleted. All right, I'm going to double up on this rock and then we're going to just get a little bit closer to it. What I'll do is in the next episode before we actually like head out doing whatever we're going to be doing in that episode. I'll um, kind of give you guys an update on the BPOs that I've got kind of in the cooker. I'll try to get that stuff uh, researching today. But I'm thinking that I'm going to try to follow that line. Like I said, we'll just start off slow. We'll try to build ventures, procurers, coveters, retrievers, and then some of the basic tech one mods there. And then I have to just look at it. We we can potentially you know look at doing uh, research or invention to do some of the tech two stuff. That will require me running some exploration sites and to get data cores and things like that. That might be a little bit more of a logistical nightmare than it's worth right now. This target is here. It's got 10 in it. So it'll be this rock plus like another like 2,000. What have we got for value so far? 2.4. So when we fill up, we might actually get, so we'll probably be like 5 million compressed value. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll be somewhere around with what we've already got in the station. Probably about nine million. It's not bad. I'm doing this episode a little bit different than I did the last one. What I did in the last one was I kind of um, recorded small little kind of snippets um, to kind of like build out the hour. For this one, I want to try just kind of running it um, in longer kind of clips. So, it's a little bit more streamlined, I think. I've got, we've got reset in literally an hour. We just got the notification for it, so. My goal is to try to have this 
episode recorded and done before we uh, have server downtime. That way, when the server comes back up, I can essentially just <clears throat> look at those BPOs and then we can get out and do a little bit more mining. This character does need to get expeditionary frigates trained up, though. Not that we'll use them anytime soon, but it's not really a priority for me yet. It's just kind of on my radar. It's a lot more important that we get our reprocessing and our industry stuff. Oh, look at that. Adventure. I always like to see what skins people use. No skin. That's kind of what I'm nosy. I see another like mining ship on grid, and I'm like, "What ship? Are, what skin are you running?" I religiously use the Blood Raider Industrial Library. I've been using that those skins on all my characters for mining for years, absolute years. What is this venture doing? He's chilling. I need to warped off. What did he? Yeah. I was looking at you, bro. He's probably like, eh, a little too crowded here with a retriever and a Mackinac. About 3,000 left, which... Go ahead and kill the cycle. And then what I want to do is I want to go here and here. Because I think that would actually kill these two rocks. I do like killing rocks. If they're really small, I don't like leaving them up. Because it's really annoying as like another miner coming onto the belt and getting on a rock and realizing it has like, you know, less than 2,000 cubic meters or it worth we're less than 1,000 cubic meters. So I try to just kind of kill. I'm going to kill these two 1,200 cubic meters because I'm a good guy. Also, it's just kind of like an OCD thing. Like, <laughs> I just need those rocks gone so I don't put my rock, my lasers back on them and position for them. I'm going to go half cycle on them. Because a full cycle on one mod is 2,400 cubic meters. So if we take half of that, that would be 1,200. So we're essentially going to let each of our strip miners run to the halfway point. And then a little, bit, a little bit over the halfway point, and then kill them, which should kill the rocks if our math is correct. So a little bit, a little bit more, which we'll still have to put lasers on a rock for a little bit longer because it will only be at like forty, maybe maybe forty-three. All right, kill those. Boom. Do a little survey here. This rock is the closest. It's got 12 in it. And this is what we'll come back to is our bookmark. So we'll have these three plague rocks over here to grab. 3.1 million in inventory. definitely a different game like it's definitely a different kind of um kind of sediment or mentality that you have to play when uh you're doing this type of mining compared to like drone mining drone mining it's very um you know you're kind of planted you're set up you kind of got everything moving um this the, you know there is some logistics moving around 15k to reach to grab any rocks which is nice Rest our lining. Because if okay, so if we let the mods go completely, they'll do five thousand cubic meters. But we don't need five thousand cubic meters. We need like less than two thousand. So we're gonna do another half cycle to fill up 
and so we're going to go ahead and align we're going to watch our distance here we can basically align until we're at like 10 but we're almost done here so boom we're full we're already aligned let's go ahead and dock up That's just kind of how I do it, <clears throat> just that uh, pre-align and like the cutting the cycles in half. I mean, there's really, we would have stayed there for the entire cycle. We were just wasting our own time. So we managed to get 3.2 million there. So as you can see, we have 4.1 right now. Throw those in the item hold. We go ahead and compress these. Stack them up all nice and pretty. 8.2 million right now, which is not bad actually for doing like two trips. So we're going back out. It's been so long since I've actually done like, you know, proper solo Mackinac, um, but we'll probably, this is probably the last run for this episode, I think, depending on how we do on time. We're at about 31 minutes right now, so I would suspect that we'll fill up in probably another like 20 But needless to say, just like I said in the last episode, if you have any sort of mining ship you want to see me run, I'm open to grabbing pretty much anything and kind of making these episodes as interesting as possible. The Mac is great, but it doesn't mean we can't come out here and like, um, I might actually try to uh, procure next time or skiff. I might actually just bring the skiff out. I need, I want to, I want this character to actually have all the mining ships available to her. So Every, if I'm gonna buy a skiff, I'm gonna use it for an episode, or if I'm, you know, whatever ship I end up using for an episode, I'm gonna end up buying it and kind of holding on to it. Right, we're gonna start moving out this way on the outside. Let's we'll see how big these rocks are. I like targeting first and then survey scanning later because it allows me to kind of see what's going on here this is a 16 and that's a 16 I'm gonna move those closer together and then just grab both of those because that'll be 32 when we kill those rocks completely which means that we don't have to worry about changing targets too much Jesus there's a lot of people in local now Kind of the benefit of actually mining this close to reset is a lot of people. I think a fleet just moved through actually because it went up and then came back down. But anyway, like I was saying, the benefit of actually running and mining this close to reset, we're talking like an hour before reset, is a lot of people will kind of look at the uh, will not really be trying to get into anything crazy with less than an hour to reset. So in most cases I've used that whole strategy with like jumping as well like jump raiders and stuff um, where I've I've been basically staged up ready to go for like the next leg of a jump and right before reset and then I let reset happen I come back on immediately after reset and do my jump and most of the time, that's enough time to get that jump complete, especially if you see, like, you know, a really troubled system. It's usually enough time to kind of do what I got to do before everybody kind of gets back online and kind of gets uh, set back up. 
so yeah using the the server reset as a tactical thing is <laughs> absolutely a thing that people do Got D scan real quick. This is kind of what we got popping in the system. Got some deep core miners, a bunch of hornets, got some ventures. These are just NPC miners here. Mine drill ventures. Looks like we got a retriever, deep core mining badger, Sinesis. A lot of NPC uh, miners in this system. This dude here in his Korax, I'm pretty sure that's the guy that's running Abyssals. He popped a trace on this uh, belt the during the first uh, trip I was out here. Local is definitely uh, volatile goes up and down up and down 24 in system right now I actually am quite enjoying the fact that I've been able to just kind of get out here and <clears throat> mine like I used to it's um I know for me uh, going from like being a high sec miner to doing null sec mining to doing like ratting to doing high level like PVE stuff in null sec wormhole space Potchman and then kind of come back down and focusing on like content for the channel it's been a long time since I've just gotten to actually just play I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but as a content creator I actually play less than I did before I made content for it because it's one of those things where you're like, you know, writing or you're coming up with video ideas or you're doing research or whatever. And you're doing that in your spare time as opposed to just logging in and and playing or just logging in and mining or ratting. And I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions when it comes to like gaming um, content creators online is a lot of gaming content creators will usually be playing the game less than their viewers do because of all the other things that are that kind of go into to or at least for me that go into like making that content so the the motivation for me to kind of shift the format of this series to being more long form like this promotes me being able to just kind of sit down like I used to and kind of play and enjoy the activities that I like to do while also producing some valuable content or some educational content um, at the same time. So the debate difference between like last episode and this episode, this episode we're essentially going to try to run uncut for an hour. And I'm uh, curious to see how that kind of works. But so far, I think I like it more because it, it allows a little bit more transparency. It's like no like movie magic um, cutting between here and there. It's like you guys get to see the, the travel time. You get to see the actual every second of the process, which is kind of nice. I do kind of want to get uh see I want to skiff but like they're so bad <clears throat> I might buy a procure we might do like some procure mining tomorrow just to you know because it's nice doing like the retriever that has like the big or the Mackinac that has like the big mining hold it has a little bit longer cycle time for its lasers but then it's like being a uh, high speed low drag with like the procure can be a nice change I'm also probably going to try to do a lot of like off-camera mining as well to kind of like, you know, expedite 
the uh, the material gathering. I think once we start getting into like some of the more complicated ship builds, when we start doing like low sec stuff, we're gonna be doing um, some low sec mining. For that stuff, we're gonna be using expeditionary frigates. I'm pretty sure. So there'll be episodes where we're going out and doing an hour in low sec, doing a uh, kernite and and grabbing whatever we can there and we're gonna have to <clears throat> go and grab some null sec ore so this is um this is kind of the the peaceful time once we start getting into low sec into uh, null sec stuff it's gonna get a little uh it's gonna get a little exciting that's the thing about low sec mining though is like i could 100 percent just take like a venture in there with a warp horse stab Obviously, like, well, it's not going to be, you know, a lot of ore uh, for each trip, but, you know, I can survive <laughs> quite a quite a while in a, uh, a properly fit venture in low sec. So that might actually be one of our strategies, especially for, like, Kernite. I know some, like, you know, pretty low-key uh, nulls are... <clears throat> low sec systems that I can kind of go bounce around in that are very large like from like end to end they have like as far as astronomical units they're really really massive and they have a lot of like asteroid belts so you can kind of use the size of the system and the variety of asteroid belts to kind of like stay off of d-scan play the d-scan game so it's a good way to hide because the d-scan is only going to show you out to like 14.3 AU so if I'm you know 15 plus AU from any like gator or uh, station or the sun it makes they have to you know the people looking for me have to kind of move around with me in order to kind of keep me on D scan which is always fun alright let's do a scan here 14 About seven and four thousand. So we're at fourteen thousand cubic meters. We're gonna be pretty close, I think. We'll probably I'll probably gonna try to finish this run and see where we're at, but forty two minutes so far. And I would say let's see, what did we do on the last one? We did on the I had three we did like five, right? Five million. So about 10 million, probably about 10 or 12 million in the hour of compressed value. It's not bad. I think for next episode, it's either going to be procure or... Either procure or orca. I need, I want to kind of go ahead and build the or buy the orca, get that thing kind of acquired. We can do like 0 0.1, 0 0.9 uh, mining. I'm gonna to try to do like a lot of plague mining today, so we can get like a, a, a lot of plague stocked up with the uh, Mackinac, and then when we go back to like 0.9 or uh, one security with the uh, porpoise or the orca, we can just kind of get everything else. But I'm thinking like a dedicated episode to just like orca drone mining would be cool. But I think before I do that, since we've done like uh, porpoise drone mining last episode, I think we'll do procure next. Just kind of go out and grab whatever. We could have cut that cycle to save ourselves some time, but it is what it is. This other rock has 2300, 2316, and we're going to mine 2413, so it's going to be a full cycle on that. We're at 19,000. We'll probably be, <clears throat> I'm assuming we're going to probably fill up close to like the 55 minute mark.
520. We've got 40 minutes before reset, which is cool because that means all this plague will be that we're mining right now will be back when we uh, come back online after reset. Obviously, I would like to, you know, be grabbing like rich plague, but um, some of these like higher security systems don't really have a lot of it and it's cherry picked. We might be able to find some if we look for it after reset, but it's probably not worth just, you know, going out and looking for it. It's our time is better spent just getting to grid and filling up with whatever. We're, we will have to prioritize um, Feldspar more than anything in manufacturing just because we need Trit for <clears throat> so much stuff. So we're going to end up kind of seeing where our deficiencies are when we start kind of reprocessing but we're purposely not reprocessing anything right now because we want to make sure that we have the implant we want to make sure we have all the the proper uh skills and stuff to maximize that yield so we're doing ourselves a favor now just kind of holding it in compressed form i might try to find like an engineering complex that's uh open up somewhere to use that has a little bit better percentages nineteen we should be at tw depending on waste we might be at twenty four after these two complete we're going to have to the asteroid is depleted. this one's got thirteen ish left in it so we're gonna go ahead and grab that one we're going to move closer actually to it. We're going to drop target on that rock because we're going in the opposite direction. So we can go ahead and move. We're going to hit this one at 22 because it's, it's got 20,000 cubic meters in it, which we won't be able to utilize, but all of. But we've got to make sure we're in range of it by the time this other rock dies. I use Q to move around the belt. It's just, it allows me to have a lot more control. We're about to get about a cycle and a half off this rock we're on right now. A little over halfway full. Once we hit 14k from that other rock, we're going to stop. So there's no point in getting super close to it. Not, has, not much has changed in the system. The local is still just crazy. I think we're, we're also just in a system that sees a lot of traffic um, moving down the trade route. Which I normally don't advise mining in a system that's kind of along a trade route, but... We're not doing anything super crazy right now. Luckily enough, I bought enough uh, crystals. I have 45 crystals in this thing. So if we go um, procure for the next episode, I'm going to go mod crystals on it, but I'm just going to use some of these crystals that I bought for the Mackinac just because these things are going to take it. This is a third trip out on these crystals and they're only 25% damaged. So it'd be a while before we actually burn through all this stuff. I hope we get uh, two good cycles off this rock, but we're going to have some waste, I think. Oh, no waste on that one. No waste on that one. Very nice. So we should get another, yeah, another 3,000 on it. So we're at 28,000 cubic meters at the moment. About 2 million value.
Another thing I've been thinking about as well when we start getting into more industry is trying to figure out a, either drop my own Athenor to Moonmine or find something that's already kind of pulling uh, fragments and uh, pay them a, a little bit to, to mine their, their frags. I don't really want to drop my own Athenor. <clears throat> I could, but it's just I don't really want to worry about defending it. Yeah, I'd, a lot easier just to pay a corporation that's already got that kind of thing going. Because a lot of the Moon Ore is going to be um, pretty basic in high sec. So, unless it was like, I would drop an Athenor in like null sec for, you know, a better type of moon. But I think for high sec, there's no real point in just you know, dropping another structure for the sake of dropping a structure when there is, when I know that there are Athorns out in high sec with corporations who are moon mining who are not able to get all their moon war off grid that would love the extra income. So if you are part of one of those corporations and you are moon mining and you're unable to get all your moon war off the ground, let me know. Depending on where you're located, I might have some misc for you. I feel like that's a good way to give back to the community. And plus, the last thing we need is more structure than high sec. Yeah, we're going to be close. We might be over an hour on <clears throat> on this episode. All right, and we're in range. Go ahead and move closer to this boy. This should be the last target we have to have to put our lasers on because he had this one has twenty thousand cubic meters, and we only need what twelve twelve thousand. I'll try to, I'm going to try to, I know we're going to go over time on this probably, but I do want to kind of finish this run because that, uh, that's just cleaner. That's one thing I, the reason I haven't covered a lot of moon mining in this series is because it's just kind of a pain to, I mean, you know, you have to kind of like time it and stuff like that. You know, in, in order for, if I was, in, at, basically I'd have to have a frac that was available to mine at the time of wanting to do, you know, a moon mining video. So it might be actually like kind of a focus for me, maybe in a few episodes from now to try to like put some lasers on some moon rocks and kind of talk about that a little bit more in depth. I've done you know, videos over moon mining and things like that in the past, but I haven't touched it at all in this series mainly because this series is essentially like solo mining oriented right and in a lot of cases if you're a solo miner which can mean you might not be part of a corporation or whatever or you're not running alts depending on how you want to define it but in most cases a solo miner might not have access to moon mining which is why i haven't really prioritized talking about it but i think that just for the sake of kind of covering as much of industry and mining in the series as possible, I do plan on kind of doing some dedicated episodes for that stuff. All right, stop the bouncing. I'm going, <clears throat> stop that ship. We're almost done, boys. We're almost done. I do enjoy moon mining though. It's like that's one of probably one to be one of my biggest uh, motivations to actually buy another orc of her high sec would be uh, if I was moon mining because go out to that moon frag, get a rock, put drones on it, profit. It's probably one of the mm, the best things you could probably do in high sec is in terms of mining. 
and even if you're like in a Mackinac doing like moon mining, you're right there at the Athenor. If that Athenor has like compression, it's like, you know, there's not a whole lot of travel time. You go to the rock, you mine the moon, fill up, go to the Athenor, which usually you go to like a rear tether or the moon mining beacon if the structure is anchored correctly. You can go to the moon mining beacon, cargo deposit, go back out to your rock. Easy, easy money. And if your frack ends up being a bonus, well, that's good money. 37,000. See how we're doing with waste. I didn't see that last uh, cycle. 13. Yeah, we got some waste on that cycle, but <clears throat> we're good. We need, uh, yeah, four, five, six, we need 7,000 cubic meters we got 13 left so yes we should be good after this rock I'd say it's pretty good though like we did um, we did a lot of uh, ore yesterday in terms of scordite pyro belts bar and then for this episode well we've done what two loads this will be the second trip out with the uh, Mackinac but I did one prior to recording so three loads of plague that's enough to kind of even out our our spread in Jita I'm not going to take it back to Jita in this episode though I'm going to hang out and probably mine the system a little bit more today and then kind of take it back when I have a more of a because I can compress it all in that station and so I can hold a lot of compressed ore in this Mackinac uh, before I take it back to Jita. So I think the idea would be just there's no sense in doing anything crazy. If you don't have to move the ore right now, there's no reason to do it. All right, here we go. We should get, should be at 32-ish, about 32-ish. Or 42, actually, about 42,000 after this cycle. See what our waste on this one is. Ah, one of them. One of them got hit hard. Yeah, so 41.9. Oh, look, we've got rats. Even in point seven, rats don't happen all that often, but you're gonna see this they're not gonna be alive for very long either. I think I get a little bit closer though. Where's my drone control range? I don't even know on this character. Forty. Is that correct? Yeah, forty. Yeah, see, like these rats here in high cycle with Tech 2 uh, light drones, trivial. Come on back, drones. Should be our last cycle here. So, one of the strategies I like to do is when I'm near the end of a cycle, I will approach the rock that I'm currently mining. I'll get as close to it as possible. And then, once I get actually close to it, I'll start aligning to my destination. That allows me to like shorten the distance. That allows me to shorten the distance that I'm mining, and then being able to align in a different direction, so I don't actually go out of range before uh, completing the cycle. Depending on what direction we end up moving here, so about 2,500 meters, and so now we're moving straight down. So that's going to give me. A good amount of time so by the time we actually complete this cycle we'll be more than aligned and ready to get out of here looks like we're yeah right almost at an hour an hour right there hour mark right there so we timed it pretty pretty good Got a few more seconds Which we probably don't need the actual, because we're at 42. Yeah, we could have probably gone half cycle on this. All right, we're full. Go ahead and dock. Drive active. 
And that's how it's done. So to answer anybody's question, it's like if I did not have compression in an a available station in this system, I would essentially have the porpoise. I would actually probably would have brought like an orca with a crane, a blockade runner in the maintenance bay. <clears throat> but I would have actually came to the system with the orca and then a blockade runner and the Mackinac inside the orca. And then I could just take the Mackinac out to grid and mine and then take all that raw ore and dump it into the embassy station and essentially just store it in the raw ore in the orca. When the orca got full, I would just undock the orca, take it out to a bookmark, siege it, compress it, and then go back to town. And then the crane, or the blockade runner rather, would be used to actually take ore at a much faster and efficient way back to Jita, as opposed to like trying to come all the way back with an orca completely full of compressed ore because that's a lot so that's one reason I really love the orca and the maintenance bay because it's just good utility alright so did about 12 we've done about 12 so far a day 12 million pretty good but that's going to be it for this episode I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, uncut nature of this episode probably doing the Precure messing around with the Precure in the next episode doing kind of more of the same because we're just stockpiling at this point and everything so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one peace out